Hi, I want to show you how to create a year on year or month on month or whatever time period comparison you want using the pandas library in Python. So let's get started. All I've done is loaded in an avocado data set, which has a date column. Um, and then we have these values that we're interested in. So the first thing I want to do is isolate the columns that are important for me. So I'm going to create a new data frame using DF2 as a variable and resaving the data frame that I want with the columns that I want. And you could definitely do this on the original data frame, but I want to keep things clean. So DF2 is going to be my new data frame. I'm going to save that. I'm going to create a new data frame just by isolating the columns that I want. And what I do is create the bracket notation to indicate the that I want to isolate a column. And then I'm going to pass in another set of brackets as a list of the columns that I'm interested in. And I'm just going to isolate the date and the average price. So we have date and average price. And then we can take a look at the head of that data frame, DF2. And now we have those two things that we're interested in. So now that we have our new data frame, DF2, we want to get the difference first, just see how we get the difference between each one of these periods of time. And the way we use do that is to use the diff function. And we isolate a column that we want to show the difference of. Since we only have this average price column, we can isolate that. And I'm going to create a new column by just saying difference. And then I'm going to pass that column, df and df, not df, df2, since we're using the new data frame. And then I'm going to isolate the average price column. And then I'm going to use the function DIFF, which is a native function. And we can press shift tab to see what that requires. So the main argument is the periods that we need to pass it. And what does it return? It'll return uh, the first differences of each period or row. So I'm going to pass it a one and let me create a few more few more cells here. So now we're passing this a new column. We're taking the difference of each one of these periods of time. If I run that, we should see the difference between each one of these rows. So, so we can see the data frame. We just use DF2 and pass it the head function, shift and enter. We get a little error, but that's okay. So we can see that the difference between 133 and the previous column is zero because there's no other previous column, but the difference between 135 and 132 is 0.2, and the difference here is 0.42, and the difference here is 0.15. So we already have this column. So that gives us a comparison. Now we would like to have this so we can see a year on year comparison. So it would be better to create a data frame with a year grouping. Check out what the, the data types are, because if we have uh, the date time data type. We can do a lot with our grouping. So let's say D DF2 dot D types. And we can see that the date is an object and not a date time. So we can create um, that for ourselves. So now we can just create our year data frame. Year, I'm going to call it year summary. And we can say, we can just use equals df2 
to.copy to copy that data frame. And now that we have that, we can use the year underscore underscore summary. And then I want to isolate the date column. And now I want to change that to a date time column using PD dot and pandas is our save variable as PD uh, to date time function. And then we can take a look at what that function requires. And now that we have that, we can just pass it our column, which is going to be this column. So I'm just going to copy and paste that to make sure it's correct. And now we can reevaluate our output of this column by looking at the head. And now you see we have the same information, but instead of the head, I want to look at the data types now and see if we have the right data type. And now you see we have a date time object. So now that we have a date time object, we can isolate the year. So I'm going to create a year column by year summary. And then I'm going to pass it a year by a column called year equals. And because we have turned this into a date time, we can use the year summary date. And now we can use the DT object to isolate the year. So dot DT and then year. I can't remember if it's a capital year or lower. So let's find out. And if you want to see all the different objects that you can pull out of here, check out uh, the documentation. So let's see if this works. Uh, so maybe this needs to be lowercase. Yes. Now, if we reevaluate that data frame by just looking at the head, we can see now we have the year. Now, what we want to do is create a, a grouping of the year. We can easily do that by taking our year, uh, year summary equals resaving that as a resaving over that data frame and then do group group by what do we want to group by we want to group by year so there's an average price here so we're going to have to get the average price for the year so we're going to use mean and now if we reevaluate what that looks like but let's take a look at the difference we do not need this difference column because this is not the difference of the year. It's the difference, the average. So what we're going to do is instead of bringing in this difference column, we are going to just go back up to our previous row and just bring in average price. and isolate that. That looks right. We run those two. And now we have that grouping. Now we want to be able to take the difference of those two. So we, we should also ensure that we can not have year in the index. We want to have year as a column, but when you do a group by, it saves this as the index. So all we need to do is reset the index. And resetting the index, if we take a look at what that looks like, and we need to resave this. And you'll see the result. Now you have the year as a column and the average price. It's okay to keep it as an index, but I think this is a cleaner way of looking at it. And now we can utilize that difference function. So I'm going to call this difference. 
equals. And then what do we want to take the difference of? Average price. And we want to take the difference because it's at the year level. We just need one. All right, that looks about right. We, we run that, let's take a look at the head. Oh, we don't even need to take a look at the head because the data frame is small. Now we have the difference in price. But what if you wanted to turn this into a percentage instead of a, just a pure difference? You can just create a percentage column. So I'm going to just copy this to save a little bit of time. Let me create a couple more cells. So we would want to change this into percentage. Well, we can we call it year over year percentage diff. Now we have a new column name. We pass it our data frame. Now. We already have the difference here, so I'm going to select that column. So we have the difference. And the difference is new versus minus old divided by old. So we have the difference already. So we just need to divide this by the previous value. And if we just isolate this value, it will it's, it's on this row and we have the difference on the next row. So we only need to divide it by the original row. And then we just need to, and of course we can multiply that by a hundred. And then we can take a look at the resulting data frame. Oh, made an uh, error somewhere. I forgot a Y here. So you can see that there's a 2% change here from 30, 133, there's 11%. And then from, and then we, of course, we can make this a little bit cleaner by just rounding the whole thing by just putting a function round around everything. And then I want to round it to two decimals. So I've used this two. I'm going to run that by pressing shift enter. And now we can see the difference. And of course, you can even add a percent here if you want a percent sign. However, there is... From this row to this row, there is a 4% difference between these two, which represents a 2% change. And if you do the math, it's correct. And then there's a, from 133 to 151, there's a 11% change, which represents 17 cent. And then here to here, you can see there is a 16% change a uh, 16 cent change, which represents 12, negative 12%. So that's it's a quick way to do year over year. You can definitely go back up and instead of using, um, instead of using year, you would just use the month here. So we could follow the same steps to see the monthly information and just to take you through the code so I don't have to take you through each step. The only thing you're going to be doing different than the steps we already created is using the month instead of the year method here. So we can see we have the data frame by year and month and we can see the price and then we can get the difference here and then we can get the percent difference here. I hope that helps. Thank you.